everyone. Uh, my name is Richard Lupa. I'm from Peter McCallum Cancer Centre in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, thank you to the organisers for giving me, giving me the opportunity to talk about Janice. So this is a collaboration project between um, three, can, uh, three institutes at Parkfield Biomedical Precinct, um, namely um, Peter McCallum, where I am, uh, we high as well as University of Melbourne, where hundreds of researchers are collaborating across different so, projects. And um, one of the challenges that we often face is uh, they try to share their workflows, analysis workflows across um, all these kind of collaborative projects. And essentially what we notice from this, between these three institutes is uh, they are running uh, different compute resource environments. Um, all the tools are being run uh, through sort of different setup. Um, the workflow specification and workflow engines that they use are also inherently different. Some have moved to a bit more standardized uh, specifications such as CWL or WDL, but some still use other stuff like B pipe roofers um, or more of the later generation like Nextflow, Snackmix. And inherently, it makes it slightly harder to share, um, to enable the collaborations between uh, these uh, institutes. Um, requesting support from system admins can also be challenging. They re refuse to support every single combination of all workflow engines out there. Um, trying to convert, to convince someone to move from one engine to another is also uh, difficult due to the number of expertise that they've built over the years. So in that, saying that, um, we need some sort of a bit more absolute standards. And um, the question that we often get asked um, in the last few months is, if I were to build a new workflow now, should I go with common workflow language or should I go with uh, workflow definition language? On one side, CWL is supported by multiple engines, as uh, the previous talk has mentioned. And on the other hand, WDL has um, offered an easier way to, to start because uh, the language is easier for people that deal with genomics, which is what we do mostly. But on the other hand, only one uh, big sort of engine, Cromwell, sort of supports WDL. So what we decided to do, because um, all, all our collaborators are sort of going to use a bit of both, is we try to build some sort of middle layers to build uh, to write workflow in Python that can programmatically generate CWL and WDL workflows. Um, Building this in sort of high-level language, so alpha use and extra benefits to do type checking, such as uh, secondary files, which can be confusing for uh, beginners that comes in. Uh, we also hope for this to extend beyond CWL and WDL uh, to hopefully, once the translation libraries are a bit more mature, it will support maybe Nextflow or SnakeMake. I'm not very um, familiar with, with both of them, but hopefully there will be some work on that. Um, and it will also be able to uh, act as a schema or API for some other uh, workflow clients, such as a graphical user interface or um, work workflow interface that can use the Genesis API to generate CWL and Widow. So um, a small examples of um, how a Genesis workflow looks like this, a very simple uh, pipeline using only a single tools, uh, BWA, MEM. Um, so what you do is you import uh, Genesis uh, helper classes you connect all your uh, edges between your input and output. Um, and what you do is you translate this to CWL. And what you get is you get a CWL files uh, workflow as well as the CWL um, YAML input. You do exactly the same, you use the exactly the same um, pipelines and translate that to WDL this time. And you got, you got the similar representations, but in WDL format uh, for both the workflows and the um, input. Um, essentially, uh, Janice doesn't have its own engines. All, it, all it's trying to do is to, trans to translate you a CWL or WDL files that you can use whatever engines of your choice um, that they will take care of all the executions for you. Um, but we come into a different challenge. Uh, trying to support multiple engines comes at a cost because all the different engines at the end of the execution use um, a different semantics for their um, tracking their progress, uh, metadata collection, and troubleshooting. So for a successful runs of pipelines, it's normally pretty easy, but most of our challenge is on troubleshooting. But trying to pull all the troubleshooting locks between these engines are still not unified, at least in my experience. So instead of summary, um, Genesis is still pretty early in the development. We make it public only recently. Um, but our most, uh, main goal is to make, trying to make uh, pipeline development a bit more portable, um, easy to use, um, still adhere to standards, we believe there are value to be added without having to reinvent the whole wheels. And hopefully it's modular and also extensible to other uh, workflow specification language. In terms of progress, we have built um, a few cancer variant calling pipelines with Genesis. They have been trans translated to CWL and Widdle, tested across Toil and Cromwell on three Australian high performance computing system and Google Cloud platform. Uh, for our cancer pipelines, we tested with the genome in the border samples. 
uh, achieve a uh, 99% uh, recall, and the numbers are all identical across combination of workflow specification and workflow engines. Um, we have all the documentation up at read the docs. Uh, the source code are available at GitHub. Um, all the translation libraries that we use can be used outside of Genus. There's uh, Python CWA Gen and Python WDA Gen. We are looking for more users to test um, other use cases, and hopefully we'll be able to get uh, more translation libraries built in the future. And with that, uh, that's the end of my uh, presentation. I'd like to thank uh, all people involved with Build Genesis, especially Michael, who did most of the evaluation um, and implementations of Genesis. Thank you.